Hello everyone. Uh, so my topic is correlation of volumetric and conventional MRI in the imaging of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's related cognitive impairment. Aims and objectives. Correlation of MRI volumetry findings with clinical staging of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Advantage of MRI volumetry as a potential mainstream modality for diagnosing these neurocognitive disorders and comparison of global and regional atrophy on MRI in subjects with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Introduction. Neurocognitive disorders, particularly Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's, represent a significant burden on global healthcare systems and pose substantial challenges in the diagnosis, prognosis and therapeutic intervention. MRI has long been a cornerstone in radiological evaluation of these processes. Conventional MRI sequences including T1, T2 and FLARE provide an essential information on the gross structural changes such as cortical atrophy, white matter lesions and ventricular enlargement. Volumetric MRI allows for precise measurement of regional brain volumes, cortical thickness and subcortical structural integrity. This quantitative approach offers the potential for early detection of subtle structural changes that may precede the clinical manifestations and more accurate tracking of the disease progression over time. Methodology This was a single center prospective non interventional cohort study performed at a tertiary care hospital. Patients presenting to the OPD clinics of departments of medicine and psychiatry with a history of cognitive impairment, CVA, or functional decline were referred to the Department of Radiology for neuroimaging. All the subjects underwent an MRI brain with volumetric analysis and clinical assessment comprising of a standard neurological examination and cognitive testing including a mini mental state examination which is MMSE. The study was conducted over 18 months from September 2022 to March 2024. Participants, the study included all patients aged 45 to 90 years referred for MRI brain and volumetric analysis with the history of cognitive decline. The inclusion criteria was restricted to those exhibiting subjective and objective evidence of neurocognitive disorders, prior stroke or CVA, and impairments in instrumental activities of daily living suggestive of functional deterioration, mood alterations, and other neurological problems. The exclusion criteria were employed that are patients with history of severe systemic illness which are cardiac, hepatic or renal failure, cancer or other relevant systemic diseases, severe unrelated neurological disease, leukoencephalopathy of non-vascular origin, likely immunological demyelinating, metabolic, toxic infections and others, severe psychiatric disorders, inability to give an informed consent, inability or refusal to undergo cerebral MRI and severe claustrophobia. MRI Imaging Protocol and Image Acquisition The subjects were imaged using a 1.5 Tesla MRI scanner. The protocol included the sequences T2 and T1 in three orthogonal planes, T2 flare, diffusion and ADC maps, SWI and 3D SVGR for volumetric analysis. The volumetric analysis was performed using advanced AI neuroimaging software called NeuroShield, which is a fully automated brain geometry based quantifying analytics tool or a cloud platform that uses AI, deep net and 3D convolution networks enabling the quantification of regional brain volumes. The volumetric data was then normalized to account for variations in brain size and subsequently compared to age match normative values with volumes below 20th percentile considered to be indicative of regional atrophy. The results were for age-wise distribution of patients, we saw a peak between the ages of 60 to 75 years of age. For gender-wise distribution of patients, there was a very clear male predominance in diseases in both the conditions, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. For diagnosis-wise distribution of patients, we had 12 subjects who came to us with symptoms of Parkinson's disease, whereas 33 patients who had symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. In distribution of clinical presentation amongst patients diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, the most predominant clinical presentation was memory deficit in 93% of the patients, followed by behavioral changes in 60%, and a small number of patients also complaining of irritability, which is amounting to 45% of the patients. In distribution of conventional MRI findings amongst patients uh, who came with uh, complaints of Alzheimer's disease was 96% of the patients showed cerebral atrophy on MRI. However, 93% of the patients also showed white matter hyperintensities and cerebellar atrophy. 
about 6% of the patients showed uh, strategic infarcts and the other uh, findings were lacunes, microhemorrhages and hippocampal atrophy. In MRI volumetry findings among patients with Alzheimer's disease, about 66% of the patients showed hippocampal atrophy and whole bean atrophy, followed by 51% of the patients showing left amygdala atrophy as well. We also had a significant amount of atrophy in the right frontal lobe amounting for 60%, followed by right parietal lobe, which amounted for 45%. Distribution of clinical presentation amongst patients presenting with Parkinson's disease, about 83% of the patients presented with tremors and 50% of the patients presented with bradykinesia, speech disturbances and irritability. Distribution of uh, conventional MRI findings among patients diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, around 100% of the patients presented with white matter hyperintensities on conventional MRI, followed by 83% showing cerebral and cerebellar atrophy. Surprisingly, only 25% of the patients had midbrain atrophy on conventional MRI findings. Distribution of MRI volumetric findings in patients with Parkinson's. About 66% of the patient had right globus pallidus atrophy, followed by 58% having left globus pallidus atrophy and left putaminal atrophy as well. Here again, midbrain and prawns showed atrophy in around 25% of the patients. The distribution of hippocampal atrophy in age-wise categories, it showed an increasing trend in hippocampal atrophy with advancing age. Discussion. Neuroimaging findings in Alzheimer's disease revealed a complex pattern of brain changes. Conventional MRI showed high prevalence of cerebral atrophy, that is 96% of the patient, followed by cerebellar atrophy in 93% of the patients and white matter hyperintensities, with a notable presence of lacunes and less frequently microhemorrhages. Polymetric MRI further detailed these changes showing pronounced hippocampal atrophy in 66% of the patients. Also specific regions like frontal, parietal and temporal lobes as well as amygdala showing varying degrees of atrophy. These findings align with the established AD neuroimaging patterns while emphasizing the importance of cerebellar atrophy and white matter changes. The conventional MRI findings in Parkinson showed a high prevalence of white matter hyperintensity amounting for 100% of the patients and cerebral and cerebellar atrophy and less frequently microhemorrhages and lacunes. Midbrain atrophy was present in 25% of the patients, which is a key finding reflecting dopaminergic neuronal loss. Volumetric MRI provides a more detailed insight showing asymmetrical putaminal atrophy, showing 58% in the left and 25% in the right. Significant involvement of globus pallidus, 66.7% in the right, 58% in the left, and bilateral hippocampal changes in 16% of the patients. These findings aligned with Parkinson's disease, known pathophysiology, particularly asymmetric degeneration of nigrostriatal pathway. The involvement of brainstem structures, including pons, in 8.3% of the patient further supports PD's complex neuropathology. While hippocampal atrophy is less pronounced, its presence may relate to cognitive symptoms in some patients of Parkinson's suggestive of Parkinson's disease with dementia. These neuroimaging patterns provide valuable insights into PD's underlying mechanisms and potential biomarkers for diagnosis and monitoring disease progression. Some illustrative cases. So here we had a recently diagnosed case of Parkinson's disease on treatment who was a 71 year old male coming with resting tremor, shuffling gait, balance, imbalance and deviation towards the right. The MRI suggest was suggestive of atrophy of the midbrain, old lacunar infarct in the pons, few T2 flare hyperintensities without restriction of diffusion in bilateral CSO, CR, bilateral frontal parietal region suggestive of chronic squamous ischemic changes. Cerebral and cerebellar atrophy. This case demonstrated morphological features of Parkinson's disease. This was a 61 year old female who came with complaints of anti grade episodic memory loss for two years associated with apathy. So, the scans demonstrated severe hippocampal atrophy with significant bilateral temporal horn prominence and small muscle ischemic changes and cerebral and cerebellar atrophy. This case demonstrated morphological features of Alzheimer's disease. Conclusion The neuroimaging heterogeneity A study demonstrates significant heterogeneity in neuroimaging findings underscoring the complexity of the neurodegenerative pathologies and the underlying cognitive impairment. 
specifically in Alzheimer's, we observe pronounced hippocampal atrophy, global cerebral atrophy, and the involvement of heteromodal association cortices were observed, aligning with characteristic cognitive profile of the disease. Whereas in Parkinson's patients demonstrated a asymmetric putamen atrophy and significant involvement of globus pallidus correlating with the motor asymmetry characteristic of the disease. Volumetric MRI utility lies in quantitative assessment in differential diagnosis. The distinct pattern of regional atrophy observed across different neurocognitive disorders like hippocampal atrophy in AD suggests that volumetric MRI could aid in distinguishing between different forms of cognitive impairments. Early detection, volumetric changes may be able to detect before gross structural abnormalities are apparent on conventional MRI, potentially allowing for earlier diagnosis and intervention. Disease staging, the correlation between volumetric changes and cognitive impairment indicates that volumetric MRI could be useful for staging the severity and monitoring its progression. Research applications, the detailed segmentation of neuroanatomical regions provided by volumetric MRI offer a powerful tool for investigating the neurobiological basis of cognitive impairment and for evaluating the effects of therapeutic interventions. These are my references. Thank you so much.